On this example, it says the cost C of making cereal can be described by the equation 25T minus 1000C equals negative 1500, where T stands for time measured in years, and T equals zero is the year 1980, and C actually stands for uh, the cost of making the cereal, and it wants you to graph this relationship. Well, you can do this without Excel if you wanted to, and um, the important thing here that we're going to do is we're going to do this by getting the X and Y intercept. Uh, anytime T is in an equation, time is always used as an independent variable. That's along the x-axis, the horizontal axis. So I think of T as being the x variable, and then the other variable, whatever it is, is going to be the y variable, the dependent variable. So T is the independent variable playing the role of x, and C is the dependent variable playing the role of y. Okay, so uh, I think we answered uh, that sort of thing. Let's get down to getting the uh, x and y intercept. Okay, well, the T intercept or x intercept is where the graph crosses the uh, horizontal axis, and the c-intercept is where it crosses the vertical axis. So to find the t-intercept or x-intercept, you let c, or the other variable, whatever it is, equal zero. Maybe you've heard before, to find the x-intercept, let y equal zero. Well, this is the x variable right here, so we'll let the y variable, c, be zero. So if I do that, if I let c be zero here, well, zero times minus 1,000 is zero, and I just end up with 25t equals negative 1,500. I would divide both sides by the 25, and if I take negative 1,500 divided by 25, I'll get negative 60. Now, negative 60 is not the x-intercept yet. The x-intercept is a coordinate. It has to have an x and y part to it. So the y part of the x-intercept is 0. After all, that's how we got it. Now, the coordinates aren't really x, y. We can think of them as being x, y, but they're really t, c. And that kind of helps you summarize what this point means. t is time measured in years, and back in the problem is that t equals 0 is 1980. So since it's negative, this means 60 years before 1980. So 60 years before 1980, that'd be 1920. What was 0? Well, the cost. The cost was the dependent variable. So 60 years before 1980, the cost of this to make this cereal or whatever was free. Now that probably doesn't make sense because it would have cost something to make this cereal, even clear back in 1920. But uh, still, that is the answer to the problem, and that would be the sentence that, that summarizes what the x-intercept means. Now, to get the y-intercept, you're going to substitute in 0 for the x. Okay, to get the y-intercept, substitute in 0 for the x. If I substitute 0 in for the x, which is the t variable, I just end up with, well, 0 times 25 is 0, and I just have negative 1,000c equals negative 1,500. So I would divide both sides by the negative 1,000, and if I do that, well, negative 1,500 divided by negative 1,000, two negatives divided make a positive, and it would actually be 1.5. Now, the point would actually be 0, comma 1.5, and what does this point tell you? Well, the 0 is the t, and the 1.5 is the c. So at year 0, 1980, the cost to make this zero was $1.50. And that's how you would do that problem right there. Now, we could also graph this on Excel. The key thing is being able to say what the slope, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept, all that sort of stuff means. But if we were going to do this problem on Excel, then Excel can only graph these if they're solved for the dependent variable. So the first thing I would have to do is solve it for C, because C is playing the role of Y, the dependent variable. Now, to solve this for C, I could take the 25t to the other side, give me negative 1,000c equals negative 25t minus 1,500, and then multiply the entire equation by a negative 1 to give me 1,000c equals 25t plus 1,500. Now I need to divide both sides by the 1,000, and that will give me c equals 25 divided by 1,000 is 0.025, and 1,500 divided by 1,000 is 1 1.5. So at this point, I got it in the slope-intercept form right now. So I can put this in as my coefficient for A on the linear Excel sheet and 1.5 in for my B. So let me do that a second. And so here they are. The 0 .25, 0 0.025 is my A, and the 1.5 was my B. And as soon as I put that in there, I get a graph. Now, your graph may not look like this, but if you want to see the x and y intercept, well, to see the y intercept, make sure that 0 is within that range for of values that we have here. Uh, like mine goes from negative 60 to 10, and 0 is in there if you want to see the uh, uh, y intercept. And I see that the x intercept is negative 60, so if I start the graph clear back at negative 60, I can do that if I want to. And in fact, you can change any part of the graph that, that you, you want to see. You can just change the start and end values. 
So you can see I just changed the values here, the start and end, to be 0 to 10, and boom, I get a, uh, a different section of the graph. What the hell happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. All you have to do to change this graph is to change the start and end values right here. So if you want to see any section of the graph, just change that start and end value, and you can see it. And again, you can make a table of values down below. If I want to see this, uh, get the cost at any given year, I can maybe start at zero if you wanted to. That's 1980, and increment it by one. And if I do that, I can see here that the cost is going up by 0.025. That's how much the cost is going up, and that's what the slope actually tells us, that the uh, cost is going up by 2.5 cents every year. So uh, that would do it for that problem. Here's one more example, uh, cost of making note brand cereal. Here's the cost, and here's the number of boxes in. Now, there is no X, Y, or T on this, so you'd have to be told what is the dependent variable, and we're going to say the cost is the dependent variable. It says the cost of oat brand cereal is dependent upon the number of boxes, so the cost is dependent. So you would solve it for C. So um, taking the 40N to the other side, that makes it minus 40N, and then divide through by 10. Now breaking this up into its parts here, negative 40 divided by 10 is negative 4, and 100 divided by 10 is, is actually 10 here. Then at that point, we would just type in our A and our B on the Excel spreadsheet, the linear Excel spreadsheet, and when you type that in, you would get the x-intercept, and it would tell you the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 10. Actually, it's the point zero ten, which means if you make zero boxes, it would cost $10. And then the x-intercept is 2.50. That means if you make 2.5 boxes, the cost would be zero. Now, maybe both of those really don't make sense with this particular problem, but that's what they're telling you. This model is telling you this. Um, and the slope is negative 4. That means for each... Uh, box you make, the cost is uh, dropping by $4. So maybe this is a little bit uh, outrageous here, but that is actually what it means. And again, we could get the x and y intercepts this way. To get the x intercept, put in 0 for y, that's the c variable, and if you put in 0 for c, you would have 40n equals 100. Divide through by 40, and you would get 2.5 for the x intercept. To get the y intercept, put 0 in for the x variable, that's the n. If you put 0 in for n, then you'd have 10c equals 100, divide through by 10, and you get c equals 10. And that's your y-intercept. So that should uh, pretty much do it there.